In this video, we'll talk about osteoarthritis, how they present, and only what you need to know from practical standpoint and for the board exam. So when we talk about osteoarthritis, I want you to think about it as a mechanical derangement of the joint, which means there is a malalignment of the joint that develops chronically in, in some patients and that causes them to be damaged secondary to activity and chronic wear and tear. And keep in your mind it's an uninflammatory process. There is no inflammation. Although the name means itis, osteoarthritis, it does not mean there is inflammation. It's a misnomer. And like any non-inflammatory process, there will be no systemic symptoms and as well there will be normal white blood cells in addition to normal inflammatory markers. Now there are some characteristics that hint you towards osteoarthritis, age above 45 and the joint pain has some characteristics as well that there is no tenderness, no swelling, no inflammatory signs as we mentioned and as well as sometimes if the patient comes late in the disease they might have some special type of nodes secondary to chronic inflammation and chronic soft tissue swelling which we call them hibernal nodes usually in the distal interpharyngeal joint now on exam you will feel that the pain is mainly in on the joint line and when you ask the patient to flex or extend their joint they will feel there is some ringing or crackling that what we call crepitus. Now one important finding that is considered pathognomic for osteoarthritis in the hand is involvement of the metacarpophalangeal joint of the thumb which is not usual for osteoarthritis in the hands usually it's more in the distal joints but MCPs of the thumb is considered pathognomic keep this in your mind. Now osteoarthritis is a clinical diagnosis as well you don't need to do any imaging, but sometimes you do an x-ray to rule out other diseases and you see some findings consistent with osteoarthritis. Now, if you see these findings and they look severe on the image and the patient has mild symptoms, don't be surprised, as discordance is commonly seen in osteoarthritis patients. Now, the findings that I'm talking about is narrowing of the joint line as well as osteophytes, subchondral cyst, and subchondral sclerosis. Now, what we have mentioned is something good to understand and a review, but I think if they want to ask you a question in the exam, it's going to be about the management. So if the patient has one joint involved, the management is going to be different than if they have multiple joints involved. So for one joint, you can use or start with topical NSAIDs. And if that fails, then you have another option, which is steroid injections or topical capsaicin. Now, Again, one joint, there is no PO NSAIDs, which we usually or commonly use. Now, on the other hand, if the patient has multiple joints involved, you can't use topical treatment. Here, we can use PO NSAIDs, and if that fails, then we can use PO deloxetin. Now, this is something unusual. PO deloxetin can be useful in patients with multiple joint osteoarthritis if PO NSAIDs fail, and this is a potential question for the exam. Unfortunately, around 80% of the patients will require surgical replacement of the joints at some point in their life. Now, as a physician, you need to know that some people take some supplements and uh, medications that they think they help with their osteoarthritis, but there is no scientific proof regarding that. And this include chondroitin sulfate, glucosamine, and sometimes the patient will ask for opioids and note that opioids they might help a little bit but there is no significant improvement in the osteoarthritis pain in patients who take opioids the only supplement that i am aware of that helps is turmeric which is commonly used these days i saw many patients taking turmeric and this has good evidence behind it hope you guys learned something and see you in the next one